Hi, in this video we're going to be going over how to multiply proper fractions. We're first going to take a look at how to use models to help us multiply fractions, and then we're going to look at how to multiply fractions without models. First, we'll start by learning how to use models. Now, when we multiply fractions, start thinking of the multiplication symbol as the same thing as the word of. So, when we're thinking of one-half times two-thirds, what we're really doing is one, finding one-half of two-thirds. To draw a model, we're going to start by drawing ourselves a rectangle. And then we're going to take a look at the second fraction. Our second fraction is two-thirds, so we're going to start by splitting our rectangle into three equal pieces. And since two-thirds is our fraction, we're going to shade in two of the three pieces we created. Now we're going to take a look at our first fraction, one-half, and I'll change the color to help us. We're going to split our rectangle into two equal pieces, the opposite direction. So since we were creating our lines up and down before, now we're going to go horizontally. So the red line creates two pieces, and we are going to be shading one of those two pieces that we created. Now when you're doing your shading, make sure that you don't go in this area where I just put the red X, because we're finding one half of two thirds. If we were to shade where I put the red X, we'd be finding one half of one. What we're going to look at now is where the two fractions overlap in our model. So we're going to look at where we shaded in both red and black. Two of our pieces are shaded in both red and black, and so that is going to become our numerator. If we look at how many pieces are in one whole, we created six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 6 is going to become our denominator. So when we multiply 1 half times 2 thirds, we get an answer of 2 6. However, we want to make sure that we simplify our answer as much as possible, and 2 6 is not in simplest form. If we take a look at the 2 and 6, we want to see what their greatest common factor is. If we look at 2, the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. Remember, factors are numbers that you multiply together to get a product. When we look at the factors of 6, we have 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now we're looking for the greatest common factor, and if we look at the factors that 2 and 6 have in common, they both have a 2 in common. So I'm going to circle that so we know that's our 2 is our greatest common factor. What we're going to do now is divide both 2 and and 6 by 2. When we divide 2 by 2, we get 1. When we divide 6 by 2, we get 3. So our final answer of 1 half times 2 thirds is 1 third. We're going to take a look at another example of how to use a model to help us multiply proper fractions. Remember in the last problem, I said that whenever you see a multiplication symbol, that's the same thing as the word of. So I'm going to write that there to remind us that we're finding one-third of three-fourths. To draw our model, remember we're going to start by drawing ourselves a rectangle. We're going to look at our second fraction, which is three-fourths, and we're going to split our rectangle into four equal pieces. Since our fraction is three-fourths, I'm going to go ahead and shade in three-fourths. Now I'm going to switch to my other color, and I'm going to look at my first fraction, which is one-third. Since our denominator is three, that tells us that we have to split our model into three equal pieces in the opposite direction. And our numerator tells us that we are going to be shading in one of those three pieces that we just created. So 
So when we take a look at our model, there are three pieces that overlap, so our numerator is three, and in one whole, we created 12 pieces, so 12 is our denominator. Again, we want to make sure that we are writing our answer in simplest form, so we're going to take a look at the factors of 3 and 12 and see if we can simplify 3 twelfths. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3, and the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. This time 3 is our greatest common factor, so we're going to divide both 3 and 12 by 3. When we divide 3 by 3, we get 1. When we divide 12 by 3, we get 4. So 1 fourth is our final and simplest answer. Now we're going to take a look at how to multiply fractions without using models, and there's two different strategies that we can use. I'm going to go over the first strategy now, which is multiplying our fractions first and then simplifying at the end. Whenever you multiply fractions, all you have to do is multiply straight across. This means that we would multiply 3 times 8 and 4 times 9. When we multiply 3 times 8, 24 becomes our numerator, and when we multiply 4 times 9, 36 becomes our, numerator, our denominator. 24, 36 isn't in simplest form, so we have to go ahead and look at our factors again. When we look at the factors of 24, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. When we look at the factors of 36, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, eighteen and thirty-six. Now remember we're looking for the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor that twenty-four and thirty-six have is twelve. So that means that we're going to divide both twenty-four and thirty-six by twelve. When we divide twenty-four by twelve, we get two. When we divide 36 by 12, we get 3. So 2 thirds is our final answer. So in this strategy, we multiply straight across first, and then we simplify at the end. Another strategy that you can use when multiplying fractions without using models is to do the opposite of what we did in the last example. So instead of multiplying straight across first and then simplifying, we're going to simplify first and then multiply across. When we try to simplify first, we're going to look at the diagonal numbers and see what we can simplify. So first let's take a look at 3 and 9. When we look at 3 and 9, the factors of 3 are 1 and 3, and the factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9. 3 is our greatest common factor, so what we're going to do is divide both 3 and 9 by 3. When we divide 3 by 3, we get 1, and we do 9 divided by 3, we get 3. Now let's take a look at 8 and 4. The factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. This time our greatest common factor is 4. So we're going to divide both 4 and 8 by 4. When we divide 4 by 4, we get 1. 
when we divide 8 by 4, we get 2. Now we've simplified our fractions considerably, and now we can just go ahead and multiply straight across. So based on how we simplified it, we have 1 times 2 over 1 times 3. When we multiply straight across, 1 times 2 equals 2, and 1 times 3 equals 3. So this shows that using the same problem but a different strategy, we can get the same answer. Now this strategy will come in handy when your numbers start getting larger because your numbers are going to be smaller if you're able to simplify first before you multiply.